Welcome to another Fear No Fix video. Today we're working on our 2004 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. We're going to be doing a coolant drain and bleed. You want to pay special attention to the last few steps when we're bleeding any air into the system. Anytime you work in your cooling system, that's anything that you open up, thermostat, water pump, whatever, you may introduce air into the system. As soon as air is in there, your efficiency goes down, your heater might stop working, your truck might overheat. So you want to make sure you go through all those steps very carefully. Let's get to it. We're going to get started by draining the coolant. Your coolant degas bottle is over on the driver's side of the vehicle, and the petcock for draining the radiator is just down here on the passenger side at the very base of the radiator. Before we get started, make sure your engine is completely cool. We're gonna release any stored system pressure by very carefully removing the cap from the bottle over here on the driver's side. Before we remove the cap, make sure you have safety glasses on to protect your eyes. Then we're gonna take a rag, we're gonna cover the cap, and we're gonna very slowly remove it, and we're gonna listen for any hissing or sounds of releasing pressure. As soon as we hear a little bit of a hiss, then just stop, we're gonna back off, and we're gonna wait until we don't hear any more air escaping. All right, now that all the pressure is released, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cap. Even now, we're just gonna be really careful. We're not gonna look directly at it. We're gonna leave the rag in place, and we're gonna keep our safety glasses on. All right, and we're just gonna move that aside, leave it a little loose, and this is just so the air can equalize while we're draining the system. We're on the passenger side of the truck now. Down on the bottom corner of the radiator, you can see the petcock right here. We're gonna open that up to drain the coolant, and it's gonna drain out right here. We're gonna take a length of 3 8 inch hose. We're just gonna press it over that, and then we're gonna run it down by the frame here, and we're gonna run it to a bucket or a drain pan or something under the truck. Hey Jordan, you want to grab a bucket? If you've got an assistant around, it might be a good idea to get them to hold the hose in place. Ours is a little short and we don't want to go spraying coolant all over the floor. Now we're going to open up the petcock valve. That's this white valve right here. It might be a little tight if it hasn't been opened for a while. If it is tight, you can use a 19 millimeter wrench or socket. You can use an adjustable wrench. You can use just about anything. It shouldn't be too tight, just something to give you a little bit of extra leverage. And then just a couple of turns and it should start flowing. Sounds like that's all of it. As you can see, this stuff really needed to be changed. Before we start filling up the coolant, we're gonna make absolutely sure that the pet calc is all the way closed. We don't wanna go dumping our new coolant all over the floor. I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit with my 19 millimeter. No torque, just snug. Have a quick look under the truck and take a quick note of how much coolant you spilled while you're working on the water pump just so you know what might be new after we start it up. You don't want to think that coolant was already spilled was a leak and start worrying over nothing. Now we're going to fill the coolant degas bottle up to the fill line here. Our bottle was absolutely filthy, so we had to clean it out with some brake cleaner just to be able to see the fill line. And we're using a Ford OEM equivalent coolant. And now we're just gonna lay the cap on top of the degas bottle. We're not gonna tighten it up. Okay, now we're going to start the truck so that we can circulate that coolant around. I'm gonna turn the heater all the way up and to its hottest temperature. That'll circulate the coolant through the heater core as well. Okay, Chris. 
All right, we got up to temp. You can see that the coolant's not at the fill line anymore. So now we gotta to top that back up. Even though we didn't put this on tight and there shouldn't be any pressure, we're gonna be as careful as we can just in case. So we're gonna have our glasses on, rag over, remove it slowly, make sure there's no pressure being released, then we'll take it off. And now we'll top it up to the fill line. Rest that cap in place. No new coolant on the floor, so far so good. Let's do it again. Same as last time, no new leaks under the truck. We're gonna take the cap off again. Once again, it was just lying there, but we're gonna be really careful, take no chances, you don't wanna get burned. So got glasses on still, rag over, safe. Remove it, let's top it up again. And we're gonna keep doing this over and over until the coolant line doesn't drop anymore. One more time, Jordan. Still no coolant on the floor. And now this time the coolant line barely moved. It's just at the bottom of the fill line. So I'm gonna tighten this up. We're gonna let the truck sit for a couple hours, let it cool off. We're gonna check one last time for leaks. And then if we need to, we're gonna to top up the bottle a little bit and then we call it good. No more air in the cooling system, no new leaks. That went well. If this video helped you, Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of any future videos. And until next time, fear no fix.